Hello and welcome. This is our last uh, section of Lifespan Psychology. We are going to walk into late adulthood. I want to take this moment just to say thank you um, for your all of your hard work. Thank you for hanging in there and sticking through it. Um, as difficult and as challenging as it may have been for you, it did pull out something great in you. So I just want to thank you again for all of your hard work and I wish you the best on all of your academic endeavors. So I don't want to hold you. I know that our time, you're anxious to get your time back and to finish the course. And so we're going to jump right into the next segment of uh, lecture notes. And we are going to start with going to start with uh, chapter 22 late adulthood biosocial development so this is the time we're talking about ageism I know we really don't hear about ageism um, as often but it is a prejudice uh, against those individuals based solely on their chronological age um, they're considered uh, people that are as part of a category and not as individuals. It can target anyone. And one of the ways that we uh, look at ageism, and it's, it's very real, it's something that is discriminated against, although it's not talked about, I think because maybe it's more accepted. Uh, maybe the idea that as you get older, you shouldn't do certain things, and that's just not true. Um, and so the name for that, when you will not hire, when you will not um, do certain things based on the age of a person is called ageism. And so for every ism, every ism is destructive. Um, but ageism is especially destructive because it is, it groups all the elderly um, together and it openly, it openly express stereotypes. Uh, you may hear or see ageism um, in media, in employment, in retirement, even uh, now that I'm talking, even in sports. You know, at a certain age, you 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 can't play sports anymore. Uh, you know, even with gymnastics, at a certain age, you can't do these things anymore. And so, when you see um, individuals of advanced age still doing things, it's almost like like what are they doing? Or that's so cute? Or you know, why are they doing this? But it's a form of ageism. It's a discrimination against the elderly. So potential consequences when ageism becomes a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy, more dependency on others, uh, giving up when young adult norms are not met, feeling feeble and consequently avoiding social interaction and caring for self, cultural attitudes uh, toward aging may influence the, uh, longevity. Uh, many times in this country especially, uh, the older you become, it's like the, the next step is a nursing home or a retirement home. Um, and so many uh, many elderly, they're not ready for that. Many elderly, they don't appreciate that. But because of their feeling hopelessness or helpless, I should say, it's kind of like, what else What else did I do? I can't keep up. I can no longer drive. I, I can't, I mean, it's just a really lonely place um, to be in whenever you're facing ageism. And so we look at the at the the memory. How do you compare to other people your age? Um, we see those trends uh, there for you to look at and make your own conclusions. Um, sleep, night circadian rhythm. We know diminishes with age. Uh, many older people wake up before dawn but are sleepy during the day. If allowed to to select a personal sleep schedule, many elders feel less tired than young adults. Um, exercise on average, only 35% of people over age 65 meet recommended guidelines for aerobic exercise, 11% of for muscle strengthening. So the exercise is needed. It is needed. Moving along, how are the results of the previous slide related to ageism? Older adults do not exercise for fear of causing damage to themselves or for lack of social support. And so again, there's no one around to cheerlead. Imagine if you have a time of, of exercise and conditioning and perhaps you go in among other people and someone would come over and cater to you, not in pity, but just then you are another 
client. You are another um, customer coming in for the services of a fitness gym and not wondering like, why are you here? Like you, you're too old to be here. And so many um, adults do not exercise, older adults do not exercise for fear of causing damage to themselves, of not having that support and the social support. It, it's, it's just not there. Most team sports and other activities are designed for younger people. There are no athletic sports that are designed just for those that are becoming older. Everything is geared towards the old, towards the younger generation. Um, culture may cause a self-imposed ageism about physical activity. So the meaning is that when you become older, you're just supposed to fade away. You're not supposed to do anything. You're too old to drive. You're too old to work out. You're just supposed to fade away. Um, I'm reminded um, in the apartment home where I live, there is an elderly man and, and I, I admire him because he's outside every day just walking and sometimes running around uh, the apartment. And I look at myself <laughs> in my little bit of youth and I'm like, wow, this man is encouraging me. I need to get out here. <laughs> I don't have the time, but I'm like, wow, that is absolutely amazing. I'm just amazed at the dedication every morning. He is out there every morning. I was like, wow, that's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So elder speak is a condescending way of speaking to older adults that resembles baby talk with short, simple sentences, exaggerated emphasis, repetition, a slower rate and higher pitch than used in normal speech. Higher frequencies are harder for the elderly to hear. Stretching out words make comprehension worse. Shouting causes anxiety and simplified vocabulary reduces the precision of language. Elders are discount are discouraged from leaving home by some younger adults in the media. Um, and I, as we are all have been guilty of something where we have been driving and perhaps someone was going um, maybe a little bit less than the speed limit or going at exactly the speed limit and you're driving, you're like, really? Older person, why are you driving? That's so, um, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. And I have been guilty when I was in a rush. I'm like, who is this driving as slow as they are? I need to get around. I'm looking, I'm like, wow, what are you doing? So I have had my own humbling experience um, with that. I try my best not to do that because I know that I want to get older. And I don't know if my children are going to really appreciate driving mom around. So I'm going to have to get there myself. And I, there will come times when perhaps they will look at me and say, you need to go home. <laughs> like, why are you driving? Um, but uh, we still have to be respectful of everyone. And, and elders speak is a very condescending way. And you will find that elders uh, that you come to and speak in such a way, they get offended and they become angry. And they'll tell you, don't talk to me as if I'm a baby. And they're not making it up. It's called elder speak. So for us to be cognizant of how we speak to um, the wise in age. Elder speak puts older adults at a disadvantage and some information here. Um, a shift in the proportions of the population of various ages. Once there are 20 times more children than older people. Uh, demographic pyramid is no longer accurate. So everyone, there's kind of a hodgepodge of, of of age um, all over, all over the uh, the country and in society. Um, three reasons for the traditional pyramidal shape. Um, I'm going to allow you to read this one on your own. I just want to give you just the the, the meat of it. I want to just give you the highlights from this. I'm going to flip through some of this information and allow you to look at it um, on your own. Um, older, or oldest to old, dependable and more noticeable, most noticeable. Um, information here about the senses and um, interactions with others that you can read. Information here, um, most people in this age, they remain sexually active through adulthood. Um, 
However, if it is less frequent and other behaviors become more important, um, they adjust to those biological changes, um, but they improve in the relationship part of the, of the, of the marriage. Okay, and again, as I was mentioning to you about the driving, so I, I, I do apologize. I apologize on behalf of, of all of us um, that they drive more slowly, um, may not drive at night or when the weather is bad and may give up driving completely because of the fast pace of everything in the world. And they just don't want to be in the way. Um, however, some will have to go where they have to go and there's no one to drive them around. So they have to get in the car and they have to drive. There's just a more heightened sense of a more awareness of the dangers that are kind of out there. So they are, they're cautious and they take their time. And for the rest of us that need to learn, we're kind of like, you know, we have somewhere to go. Can you please get into the slower lane? Um, which is just not nice. It's just, it's just not nice. Um, moving on through this slide, um, every sense becomes slower and less sharp with each passing decade. It's just a sense of losing and slowing down um, from where you were before in life. And then how technology uh, can help with some of these things that, uh, that happens as we get older. Um, brighter lights and bifocals, sorry about that. Um, how to take care of those eye conditions through surgery, elaborate visual aids um, that will help uh, even with the hearing, um, those types of devices that are that are now here um, to help as we become older and our hearing um, becomes uh, less audible or we cannot hear the way that we used to. Some information here, society and sensory loss. I'll let you read that at your leisure. This, this is just some of those physical functions that begin to slow and decline uh, in our bodies as we become older. The heart pumps more slowly. Vascular network is less flexible. Lungs and kidneys function less effectively. Digestion slows down. Healing takes longer from illness and accidents. And then other information that says that varies from person to person. Um, some different diseases that affects the elderly a little bit differently. As you know, with this whole pandemic, it has been stated that what will not affect the younger um, will affect the older uh, much, much worse. And so there is a, um, a sensitivity around the elderly population, a protection over them that we have to uh, be cognizant of. And then we have some times here of the actual lifespan and how long that will take and how you can improve upon it with lifestyle, medicine, and technological aids. Okay, with falling, I know that there's that, you know, infamous commercial that we hear, you know, I'm falling and I can't get up, um, osteoporosis and broken bones and, and things of that sort. Um, and it's just because everything is just slowing down so the healing uh, process takes longer um, and so uh, the time that's needed to heal is not always the time that's allowed for healing and so it always causes a mix um, a, 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 a headbutt if you will in the world around the elderly and what seems to be expected of them when that's not realistically uh, possible to happen so wear and tear on the body and just to think of if you have been having the same eyes, you know, for, for 75, 80 years, you know, the muscle is still a muscle. It becomes um, uh, stressed and, and it slows down. There's a wear and tear on the body. The genetic clock, a mechanism in the DNA of cells that regulates the aging process by triggering hormonal changes and controlling cellular reproduction and repair. And so everything just begins to slow down. Um, cellular aging, um, information here for you to read. Again, the emphasis is on everything slows down. Centurions, 
These are the individuals that live to be a hundred. Um, four ways or four um, factors influence living to be a hundred. It's diet, it's work, family and community, exercise and relaxation. Having a balance of all four um, gives you a better chance for longevity to reach that milestone or that mark of a hundred years old. Maximum lifespan, the oldest possible age to which members of a species can live under ideal circumstances is 122. That's amazing. That's amazing. Each species seems to have a genetic timetable for decline and death. Um, although the average lifespan has clearly increased, it is disputed whether the maximum can increase. So although we're getting closer to that 122, we don't know if you can live beyond 122. Good stuff. So at this time of this has been brought to um, a close. Not a whole lot of information here, but good information to have, especially the part about the elders speaking the ageism, because that is kind of a, a, a work in reality that we're in, to be cognizant of the wisdom that is in the ages of those that have lived that life um, before us. And so at this time, I want to go ahead.